So very cool, man. That's a that really has you can hear that thumb, which you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. It's just constant, right? So it's it's going constant, and of course that is the first thing that I would imagine you have students get down. So why don't you break this down for us a little bit? Kind of show us just how to get started. I know once again you've got all of the tab for this available, um, yep. but kind of show us how to get started, and then go over some of the you know the highlights or the important parts that students should really be paying attention to. Okay. Yeah, and I think you said it nicely. The thumb really keeps moving the whole time. It's always going. And if you practice in it and you realize your thumb's not playing every quarter note, you're missing something there, right? And it's important. And the thing is, as you get that down, it's such a constant, it actually becomes easy when you, you work on getting that down. And the way to really get down that technique is working on picking patterns, which are in the, the prep materials. And that's what we've been doing in the, in the warmups. But I wanna say one thing that I think is a good tip in general, if you're gonna print it out, I printed out my charts that I wrote out for you guys. And I think that's a great idea if you can, whoop, sorry, if you can tape it together. That's a little trick there for you, no extra cost for that. Uh, but it helps to keep everything in the right pages, everything you can look at the whole tune, you can fold it up, put it in your binder. So I would print it out if you could. Uh, you can always look at it on the, the computer as well or just use your ear. But let me show you first, let's walk through just maybe the first four bars. And as I said, it's so built around chord shapes. So the first chord is an E major seven. It's played in a little bit interesting fingering. That's sort of the core shape I'm gonna use. And I'm going to use my middle finger and pinky. They're gonna to have to move around a bit to get the melody. So I start there with that F sharp, G sharp, B. And the thumb here on this chord is just going six, four, six, four. So if I put those things together, I'll just play the first bar for you. One more time. The other thing I'm doing is I'm muffling and muting the bass strings with the back of my palm here. And that's important because it helps differentiate the bass notes, which you can kind of mute a little bit, get out of the way, helps the the melody notes come through and really shine and ring out okay so after that e major seven in bar one we go to this a major seven all right and once again as i said i'm using a lot of open strings here and when we get to the a major seven it's pretty easy we're going to play a whole note on beat one and let the thumb keep going for the rest of the bars so here's the first two bars Now, I want to mention one more thing, is that you can be very articulate with a thumb, which would be like, when I say articulate, only hitting the fourth string, especially on beats two and four. Or on beats two and four, you can brush up and get a little bit of that third string. All right, and I, I like doing this a lot. You'll see in the transcription that on beats two and four, I put some notes in parentheses. Those are optional notes you can strum up to get with your thumb. So here it is with a little bit more of the brush. All right, so you can feel free on beats two and four to brush up quite a bit. Now, the third and fourth bar, we stay on this A major seven, but our melody is really achieved by our index finger doing this. That's the melody there. Of course, with the alternating bass. time so let's do the whole first four bars one two three four. that melody very legato and smooth letting those open strings ring out now we go next to this C sharp diminished seven. All right, and that's, again, I'm naming out these chords because that's how I think about it. I think to myself, what's my next chord shape coming up? So this is my C sharp diminished seven. And right after that, I'm gonna play this G sharp seven. So there's some bar chords going on. That will be a little bit tricky if you haven't done a lot of bar chords, but we just play two beats here on the C sharp diminished seven like this. The melody. And jump up to our G sharp seven into a C sharp minor. 
So let's look at that move. That's one that's worth practicing quite a bit. One more time. Okay, and then next up, we're gonna jump up here to what looks sort of like a C major triad, but A is in the bass, so this is an A minor seven. And the melody here, we're gonna go like this. That's the melody, open E, B, Oh, sorry, open E, G, B, back to G, with the alternating bass. One more time. Okay, so let me play through that entire first eight bars. I'll go nice and slow, and I'm going to use just thumb and index finger only. go back into the A section again, just like we did the first time. Now the second time, it's sort of a second ending, a little bit different. We go from a C sharp to a minus seven, up to a D sharp to a minus seven, and I'm gonna let my bar play all the way across so I can grab this A note on top. I'll go like this. time. That's bar 13 in the transcription. To a C sharp minor 7. So once again I'm thinking of holding down that whole shape and then using my available fingers like the fourth finger to grab the melody. Then we go to an A, down to a G sharp 7. So that, really what I just did there was the A section, which is eight bars. And then I repeated the A section pretty much the same, the next eight bars with a little bit different ending to take me into the B section. All right, so now let's maybe look at a little bit at the B section, what's going on. So we, we're leaving this G sharp seven. And the first chord of the B section in bar 17 is a C sharp minor. We're gonna go like this. So once again, thumb, nice steady quarter notes, index finger pinching along with that right on the beat. Now we're going to switch to this chord, which is a C sharp minor major seven. Did he just say minor major seven? Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. And uh, same kind of melody there. So let's just practice. These are the first two bars of the B section from C sharp minor down to C sharp minor major seven, right? And then we're gonna go here, this is an A7, with the 13th there, and the melody is down to a G sharp seven. And I use my ring finger, fifth fret, second string, that's the flat 13 there. I like to add that just in case I brush up a little bit with my index finger. What you can do, you can brush using that finger. I like to get that extra chord tone. So here's the first four bars of the B section. Continuing on, it does pretty much the same thing again. Now here in the last two bars of the B section, I go to this A major sixth. And then I strum this A minor six. So let's back up again. We start with a C sharp minor chord, then C sharp minor major seven, A seven, G seven, G sharp seven, excuse me. Then we repeat that. C sharp minor, C sharp minor major seven, A major six, and then an A minor six. So let me play through the entire B section slowly for you. And then we're 
back to the A section. Okay, and, and really it's the same thing through the A section. There's tiny little variations, which I've notated everything exactly how I played it on the performance. And I would say that the thing to do, if you're totally beginning with finger picking, maybe just take, actually, regardless of your, your skill level, take it a little chunk at a time. I think it's difficult for anyone to take any tune and try to learn the whole thing. I know that's what we're asking you to do in the next week, which is tough, but just start with a few bars at a time and get those bars down really well. If you're just starting out, see if you can just do the thumb only with the chord shapes. So you might go. You know, just play whatever chord is going on and the whole entire shape. Just get your thumb working first and then you can loop back and get the index finger in there. Okay, and when you play it and you work on it, you know, get it as close as you can to what I played. But if it's if you have a little variation in the phrasing and the way you're doing it, that is totally cool as well.